Traven Keith, welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks for having me on, JJ. People have, have recommended you as a person to to know, not only to know, but also a, a good actor in this space. So it's a pleasure to finally get a chance to speak with you. Um, and we got a lot to talk about, but this is really about you. So let's just get right to it. Uh, what you know? Where where did you begin? You've been into this stuff for a long time. Where did you, where did things start when it came to crypto and Traven? Yeah. So um, first, thanks. I'm I'm happy to hear people have uh, such a positive opinion of me. Um, yeah. So I, I heard about Bitcoin back in 2011. Um, I was working in tech supported time uh, when I was in college, and a coworker of mine said, "Hey, Traven, you're you're in tech. You're in business. You should really look at this thing uh, called Bitcoin." And I asked him, "Oh, what is it?" And he says, "Oh, it's this thing. You know, the price is going to go up. Uh, it's this online currency that." It stays there. And I said, well, what can I use it for? And he says, oh, well, you can use it for Silk Road. Um, and told me <laughs> what Silk Road is about. Uh, and I was trying to immigrate into the United States at the time. So I said, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm just going to stay away from this. I looked over at the screen and I saw the price of Bitcoin at around uh, 3 to $4. And I said, uh, you know, not for me. Kind of like a penny stock. Uh, fast forward two years later, in 2013, I was quite happy. Uh, I just got published on Search Engine Journal. I was working in web marketing at the time, so that was quite uh, something that I was happy about. And I opened Yahoo News, and I see uh, Bitcoin hitting $1,000. And I, <laughs> I, yeah, I just like freak out. The first thing I do, my hands are shaking. I reach for my phone. And I call my my former coworker, and it goes to voicemail. I'm just saying like Aaron. But basically, yeah, I I, I realized okay, you know, for it to jump from three bucks to a thousand, there there must be something here that's uh, of substance. So I started reading into it a lot. I mean, there there wasn't a lot of uh, information readily available at the time, uh, as I'm sure you know. So yeah, I, I started spending a lot more time into it. I dove into it. It was very difficult to acquire Bitcoin at the time. I wasn't too interested in using local Bitcoin because I wasn't really living in a very secure location at that time. So yeah, I actually had to buy Litecoin before buying Bitcoin. And so I used Litecoin to buy Bitcoin. <laughs> a very weird start to crypto. Um, yeah, and spent a lot of time in, in Bitcoin markets uh, where I'm now an administrator on uh, for our Slack channel. At some point in time, I got frustrated. I saw that everything was just, you know, clones upon clones of Bitcoin without doing anything really special. I said, you know, is there anything that is actually focused on working in a technology, um, expanding it and actually adding things to it? Uh, people redirected me to MasterCoin, which didn't launch at the time. It's now known as Omni. But somebody also told me, hey, you should check out this thing called NXT. It's pretty much like MasterCoin, except it's out right now and running. So I took a look at it. I found it uh, quite interesting. And I, yeah, just kind of stuck around, followed a lot of developments. And it's, uh, it's very interesting. I mean, at, at the time, there were uh, Ethereum wasn't announced yet. The idea of, a, of blockchain as a service was quite interesting. So I spent a lot of time just reading, uh, joining conversations. It's very interesting having, you know, the founder of Waves, the founder of Lisk, founder of IOTA, all three of them uh, and multiple other founders of other projects uh, just talking together just around NXT. So that was that was quite fascinating to look back on now. I took a hiatus in 2014. I uh, had some life issues, couldn't immigrate to the United States. Uh, That's a completely different, another story. Ran away to Fiji, actually. Wow. Um, Fiji. Yeah, it's a, it's a great place to visit. I highly recommend anyone listening to consider going to Fiji. It's a beautiful, beautiful place. Fast forward I, to 2016. Somehow, <laughs> I end up in this place called Svalbard, which is uh, 78 degrees north. It's about a three-hour flight north of Oslo in Norway. Uh, okay. Yeah, so we have about four months of no sunshine, four months sure. of constant sunshine. So it's, it's a bit crazy. So um, I was having some financial difficulties, and I remembered, okay, you know what? I bought about 2000 bucks worth of crypto. Uh, let's see what that's worth. I need to sell it. And found out that everything was, yeah, down to about 90%. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, seeing that was just kind of like a stab in the heart. Uh, it was painful. I, I really needed the money at that point in time. I was looking for a career change at the time. I couldn't get sponsorship uh, in the European Union with just web marketing. And there are a lot of good web marketers here, so it's really difficult to stand out. I decided to jump back in it. I thought, you know what? 
even if the price is down, there's still a lot of development that's going on. Uh, the Linux Foundation just uh, announced Hyperledger. Um, I'm a big uh, fan of open source software. I've been following it since around 2004, 2005. Um, so it was a very big, uh, good sign to me um, that the technology could take us indeed forward and that there is an opportunity here for me as well. Um, so yeah, I decided to do a career shift um, and jumped into cryptocurrencies and blockchain, joined the NXC Foundation, got involved with Hyperledger, um, pretty much said yes to a lot of um, opportunities, even if they didn't pay well or pay at all. I was mostly a volunteer actually for NXT and Ardor, uh, only started really getting paid uh, about six months in. <laughs> I'm not the best person to ask about how to make money. I'm, I'm really not. <laughs> but uh, no, I, I don't regret any of it at all. I learned quite a lot. Uh, that was worth more than, you know, to me, any financial compensation to be able to understand everything. Uh, yeah, and eventually I, I joined the, this company called Secos. Um, the company provides some token sale advisory services. Hopefully Q1, Q2 next year about uh, this thing called Seed New, which will tokenize uh, profit participation tokens in a fully legal structure uh, just within the European Union starting off. Um, shortly after that, I founded Agavon, which is a um, consulting company that helps other companies figure out whether or not to use blockchain technology. Also works in some software throughout the time. Agreed to be a community fund trustee for Byteball. He's the director of the Cyclic Graph. Uh, became an advisor for Smart Cash, which is a merchant-focused uh, and community-oriented cryptocurrency. 70% of all the block rewards uh, go to community-funded projects. Still keep uh, close tabs on NXT and Ardor. Still very much a part of the community. Uh, before I uh, fully stepped down as a member, a board member of the NXT Foundation, um, I launched this thing called the Ardor and NXT Group, sort of like the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance, uh, but for Ardor and NXT and also a bit more um, engagement with the community. Um, yeah, and uh, I was the interim director starting off before I handed it off to Elizabeth Mong, who's uh, very well qualified for a job and she's done a great job so far. So yeah, that's a quick, uh, <laughs> quick slash it's long... Really is that you basically done things, for, you know, for, without pay, you know, voluntarily mm -hmm. because you had a passion for the idea. It's almost like the price is, is becoming less and less relevant as more and more of this technology is developed and actually employed and actually being used. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I fully agree with that. I think that uh, the people who are really passionate about the technology, about, um, about cryptocurrencies, um, are really going to continue working on it regardless of the price. I mean, I, I remember, you know, while working for the, uh, well, being a part of the NXT Foundation, sometimes I would actually be a bit scared when the price would go up because some people would blame me whenever it go, whenever it went down. And so when the price was going up, I was like, oh no, it's going up too fast. If it goes down, it's people are going to spam my email telling me I'm doing something <laughs> wrong again. <laughs> The, uh, the Seacoast. Let's talk about that mm -hmm. for a moment. Seacoast helped uh, Jolarita uh, with the ICO, right. um, as did my company Agavon. Yeah, I, I joined them when I met uh, the CEO, Arnab uh, Nascar, at the Block Show, convention, uh, Block Show Europe uh, by Coin Calligraph uh, in April last year. Started becoming more actively involved uh, late last year after I moved out of Svalbard and moved here to Prague, uh, where I'm currently in right now for the next few months, at least before I moved to Switzerland. Um, yeah, so I, I started off with the token sale advisory team, helped out Jolarita with their ICO, uh, tried to help um, our other clients, tried to get some clients on board and dealt with a lot of the business development um, around it. But now I'm focusing more on the uh, seed new platform that will be coming out uh, early next year or mid next year. People wanting to launch their own coin or wanting to launch, you know, whatever their their token might be, uh, is there there must be just you must be getting a lot of interesting and strange emails. <laughs> I mean, about this. Well, I, I mean, it's not that new to me because when I was, you know, back with the NXT Foundation uh, and the Ardor and NXT Group, I would get those emails all the time. A lot of people wanting to launch uh, a token. Um, around it and uh, around their business. Uh, one of the nice features um, on NXC and Ardor is that you can distribute um, dividends or profit shares or what have you to your token holders and it's the same price as one transaction. So 
it attracted a lot of uh, businesses that were interested around that. A lot of businesses today don't really want to create a utility token. I mean, they want to create a token that uh, they can just say, look, uh, if you have the token, you get a percentage of our profits. Um, it's not easy to have that set up because that's essentially a security. Um, and yeah. you know the legal setup around that is quite difficult, uh, especially there uh, in the United States. Uh, in Europe, it's also difficult, but uh, trying to find certain ways around that, uh, well, not around it, but rather to make sure everything is fully compliant. And so, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm whenever I talk to people, a lot of them, you know, don't want to incorporate blockchain into their business systems, but want to take advantage of it in the market. And instead of releasing a, you know, token that really doesn't do anything, they want to release some release something of value. And so that, I think that's where a lot of this can come in. Agavon is that's that's sort of like before Seacoast, before they even go and start to do to sell a coin or token. They first need to figure out if blockchain is is right for them. Is that basically the idea? Uh, sort of. So, well, with Sikos, I'm I'm just a co-founder together with right. uh, a lot of other people. Um, right. With Agavon, it's it's sort of it's not a prerequisite in any way. I mean, um, it was something I I it was a company I created because there were too many projects out there that I thought were using blockchain that really shouldn't. I, I'm not going to mention any projects specifically, but there are, there are a few out there uh, that we're seeing that and that we have seen um, that maybe you know aren't running anymore that shouldn't be using blockchain or you know block it's maybe they're overreaching blockchain like uh, it, blockchain is a great thing to address a certain need and it's the most viable solution for that need, but they're overreaching it uh, and at some point in time it'll it'll bite back at them because you know, they won't be as efficient as they would have been otherwise. Are you based out of a certain location with this, or are you just sort of traveling around I the world? I travel quite a lot. Uh, I mean, right now, I'm based in Prague, but the company is based in Zug, Switzerland. Uh, I'll be moving there, hopefully, in the next few months, um, just working out some visa things at the moment. Uh, hopefully, I'll be based there, but I don't expect to stop traveling anytime soon. Uh, so what's what's next for you? What are you looking forward to coming up in the future? And uh, like, what's what's the future for for Traven? Uh, well, I've had a lot of um, ups and downs. So I don't think actually that too much into the future now. Um, I'd like Agavon to grow. Uh, I'd like it. I'd like to get more clients on. I hope that uh, the seed new platform of Seekos grows really well. Um, I hope that the blockchain platforms that I'm working on. I mean, that I'm working with, uh, Smart Cash, Byteball, uh, well, that one's a direct acyclic graph. And of course, the NXT and Ardor uh, ecosystem continues to grow. I'm definitely still an active member of the community there. So yeah, I guess I, what I'm saying is I'm going to continue being involved in all of those. I'm also very much involved with Hyperledger. Uh, actually, i one of the co-authors of their of the white paper, not the one that, that got published late last year, the one that's that we've still been writing for about a year and three months now that hopefully we'll be done in the next few months. But that's what we said about half a year ago. Yeah. <laughs> um, so all over the place. I mean, I have to, I, I actually do have to do quite a lot um, because it keeps things interesting. I'm, I get bored really easily. So I need to have a lot of different things going on at the same time, but not too much. And I, I like to make them all, you know, connect in some way. Well, thank you so much for taking this time to talk to me, and I look forward to uh, having you on again. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Bye.